Have you ever wondered how your brain communicates with the rest of your body? How does a thought lead to an action or a feeling translate into a physical response? The answer lies in a tiny but incredibly complex structure known as the synapse. Synapses are the fundamental units of communication in the nervous system acting as the bridges between neurons. Without synapses, our nervous system would be unable to transmit information, rendering us incapable of thought, movement, or sensation. At the heart of every synapse is the synaptic cleft, a microscopic gap that separates two neurons. This gap may seem insignificant, but it is a bustling hub of activity. On one side of the synaptic cleft is the presynaptic neuron, which sends the signal, and on the other side is the postsynaptic neuron, which receives the signal. The presynaptic neuron contains synaptic vesicles, tiny sacs filled with neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers of the nervous system. When an electrical signal, or action potential, reaches the end of the presynaptic neuron, it triggers the release of these neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. Once the neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft, they must travel across this narrow space to reach the postsynaptic neuron. The postsynaptic neuron is lined with specialized proteins known as receptors. These receptors are like locks waiting for the right key, the neurotransmitters to bind to them. When a neurotransmitter binds to its corresponding receptor, it triggers a response in the postsynaptic neuron. This response can either excite the neuron, making it more likely to fire its own action potential, or inhibit it, making it less likely to fire. This delicate balance between excitation and inhibition is what allows our nervous system to function with precision and coordination. The entire process of neurotransmitter release and reception occurs within milliseconds, showcasing the incredible speed and efficiency of synaptic communication. After the neurotransmitters have done their job, they must be cleared from the synaptic cleft to prevent continuous stimulation of the postsynaptic neuron. This clearance can happen in several ways. Neurotransmitters can be taken back up by the presynaptic neuron in a process called reuptake, broken down by enzymes, or diffuse away from the synaptic cleft. These mechanisms ensure that synaptic transmission remains a finely tuned process, preventing overstimulation and maintaining the balance of neural communication. Synapses come in various types, each specialized for different functions. The most common type is the chemical synapse, which uses neurotransmitters to relay messages. Another type is the electrical synapse, where neurons are connected by gap junctions that allow direct electrical communication. Electrical synapses are faster than chemical synapses, but lack the versatility and complexity of chemical transmission. The diversity of synapses reflects the complexity of our nervous system, enabling it to perform a wide range of tasks from simple reflexes to complex cognitive processes. For instance, the synapses in the spinal cord are involved in reflex actions, enabling you to quickly withdraw your hand from a hot surface. Meanwhile, the synapses in the brain are involved in higher-order functions like memory, learning, and emotion. The journey of understanding synapses is a testament to the marvels of biology and the endless potential for discovery in the field of neuroscience. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.